overarching commonality between medicinal mushrooms is that they possess anti-cancerous properties. And this mushroom right here, Ganoderma suge, or the hemlock rishi mushroom, is no exception. You see, a normal part of day-to-day -day living involves cellular proliferation. This is when two cells are formed from one. Cell division, cell reproduction, it happens to all of us every single day, no problem. However, when left unchecked, when unregulated, especially with mutated cells, this can lead to cancerous spread, cancerous growths in our body. So to inhibit the cellular proliferation is important to stop cancerous growths from spreading in our body. A new study from 2015 has shown that a hot water extract from this mushroom, so think of a tea or think of a decoction, something that's very easy to make at home, has the ability to inhibit cellular proliferation of human leukemia cells and human liver cancer cells. Now the Rishi mushroom, Ganoderma suge, is one of my favorite mushrooms to seek out every June and July here in western Pennsylvania. And if you're looking for this mushroom, look at fallen hemlock trees, that's its substrate. Now, not only are oyster mushrooms edible, choice edible mushrooms, but they're medicinal as well. They're not really recognized as a medicinal mushroom, but there are several studies documenting the medicinal effects of Pleurotus species. So whenever you're consuming this mushroom, you're not just getting vitamins, you're not just getting minerals, you're not just getting small amounts of protein, but we're also getting these medicinal benefits that are absolutely essential for optimal health. And I encourage you to get out and look for oyster mushrooms. So hot water extract from the oyster mushroom possesses both antifungal and antibacterial properties against candida, against trichosporin, against staphylococcus aureus, and against E. coli as well. Now the oyster mushroom is one of the easiest mushrooms to identify out in the wild. Pleurotus austriatus is one that you will usually find in fall through early winter. However, there are several species of oyster mushroom that you can find all year round. This is a great mushroom because it's the only one, you know, I was telling y'all about that's good for Parkinson's, MS, anything related to the nerves because it helps to regrow the, the neurons, the nerve sheets. So I put it in, you know, even though it's best boiled in a decoction, but with a long slow boil, you can actually tincture this one, but you have to leave it for a long period of time so that it'll pull all that medicinal value out. But it's the only mushroom, or what we call a fungus that I know of, that actually you know, uh, will regrow those nerve cells. So, you know, if somebody's MS or Parkinson's, you can help them with a lot of relief with that. Yeah, so this will be real easy to just throw it in 80 proof vodka, make a simpler tincture out of it, and uh, give it, a, I'd give it about three or four months is how long I would let it sit so that it have time to extract all of that out. And then uh, give them doses about 15 to 30 drops three to four times a day for somebody with MS or Parkinson's or any kind of a palsy that's nerve sheath related or nerve damage related. And it's one you can't mistake it. I mean, what else looks like this? Nothing. I mean, there's n there's no mistaking it for something else. That's a pretty one. I may take some more film of it when we get home. There's your Rishi down there, Ed. great edible mushroom and it's a good medicinal mushroom too and Japan is called maitake here we call it hen of the woods sometimes people will call it chicken of the woods so totally different mushroom and it's real good anti-cancer fungus wonderful if you can put it and make a make a capsules out of it is okay but if you'll take it freeze it save it for later and do a long slow boil to extract all of the chemicals out of it it makes a great uh, medicine for people with cancer, internal cancers. It also is specific to things like bladder cancer. It acts like interferon. It helps build up the body's natural interferon to fight off the cancers. And uh, just a great overall wonderful mushroom. I mean, it's, if I didn't have chaga, this would be the first fungus I would go to for cancer. Most definitely. The further south you go here in you know, like North Alabama, it's harder and harder to find. North Georgia into North Carolina on up into Indiana, Indiana, Wisconsin, place like that. It's, you can get some that'll be 50, 60 pounds. And it's real tender still, so you know it's, it's still good and edible. And look on the underside, nice and white, 
easy to identify. You can't, once you see it, you can't miss it. It doesn't look like those round toadstool mushrooms, anything else. It looks just like what it is. And the good thing about it is it's so easy to, to gather and there are no look-alikes that are poisonous. We've got uh, black staining Meripolis and we've got Berkeley's polypore here, which came up earlier in the season, more towards late summer, very early September. And they vaguely resemble this, but even if you pick them and ate them, it's okay because they're edible too. So they don't taste as good. They're you know bland compared to this, but they're they're not poisonous. This is a supplement that I took for a few years, several years ago, that I was very impressed with. It was made of the 10 most powerful mushrooms in the world. And the founder, Jordan Rubin, made it when his grandmother came to him when she had cancer and asked him to help her. And this supplement can get expensive. I decided to, uh, why not just find them, look for all 10 mushrooms. I was already getting into um, wild edible mushrooms. In that process, I found some that were medicinal, you know, the reishi. And so far I have found most of them. Here is a list of them. This is one of them. Tremella, and I don't know how you say the last 